my name is Mr. Reese, and this is my first video. And in my math class, I use a lot of memory devices, so I'm going to share one of my favorite ones today. And here we are. We're going to do simple dividing fractions. You probably learned this in elementary school. When you divide fractions, you can't actually just divide the numerators and divide the denominators like you would with multiplication. You have to actually change it to multiplication first and flip the second one. Some of you may have heard of keep, change, flip, where you keep the first fraction, change the sign, flip the second one. I'll get to my memory device in just a second, but here's how you do this. Keep the first fraction as it is, and then change division to multiplication, and flip around the second one. So my memory device goes like this. Can you divide it? Don't even try it. You got to flip it around and multiply it. It's your future math grade on the line. It's your future math grade on the line. You got a big fraction, let's inverse it. Flip it back and then reverse it. And we'll get to that one in a second. So let's finish this problem. So to finish simplifying this, once you have it into multiplication, then you look for cross-canceling to make the number smaller. So I see 9 and 3. OK, 3 goes in there once. 3 goes in there three times. 5 and 7 can't cross-cancel. So our final answer, now we can multiply straight across the numerators. 3 times 5, 15. 7 times 1 is 7. And there is our answer. So that was a simple problem. No variables involved. Now for you Algebra 1, Algebra 2 students, you've probably seen something like this. Looks very intimidating. But if we use the same principles, the same memory devices, we can make this not so bad. So we're going to first immediately, it's when you see the division symbol and fractions involved and you think, can you divide it? Don't even try it. So we're going to think that. So can you divide it? Don't even try it. You've got to flip it around and multiply it. And let me grab this black pen and we'll go. I usually set my fractions up. So there's my first one. I change division to multiplication. And then we're going to flip this one. To save time, I usually involve factoring in this right away. So like as I'm rewriting, I factor it. So that could be a whole nother lesson. I'm going to assume you know how to factor polynomials, but I'll review it with you right now. So when you have a trinomial, it factors as two binomials. So x squared will be x times x, and then 24, the factors, 8 times 3, or 4 times 6, or 2 times 12, but you want the factors that would subtract to give 5. So it's got to be 8 and 3. 8 times 3 is 24, but to get that negative 5, you'd have negative 8, positive 3. Then we can factor this one. That's called the difference of two squares. So x squared is x times x, and 9 is a perfect square, 3 times 3. When it's the difference of two squares, you get different signs here, so plus and minus. Moving on to this one, be careful here. We've changed it to multiplication, and we need to flip it. So focus your attention on one at a time. So this was in the numerator, but now it's going to be in the denominator. So um, I didn't mention this yet, but when you're factoring, you always should look for a GCF, a greatest common factor first. So these do. These have an x in common. And so I pull that out, and I'm only left with x minus 8. So again, this was on top here, but I flipped it. So now it's in the bottom. And then we have this one, which is now going to be flipped to the top. And that one doesn't have a GCF. There's nothing in common. So then we do the normal factoring. x squared is x times x. 15, probably 5 times 3, probably not 15 times 1. So let's try that. 5 times 3. I need a positive 2. So we do positive 5 and minus 3. Now I always tell my students, that's the hard part. You've done all this work, and you factor first. Here's another memory device, FF. Factor first, and then you get to cancel. Canceling is the fun part. So we factor everything. Now we look anything on, anywhere on the top where you see a like term with anything on the bottom because they're all being multiplied. You can cancel them out. You can even make a little fun sound effect. OK, x minus 8, whoosh, whoosh, those are gone. Um, x plus 5 on top, do I have an x plus 5? Nope. X minus 3, yes, so I can go whoosh, whoosh, cross out those. And then, oh, I have X plus 3. Sometimes I'll do a double mark, like whoosh, 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 to match those up. And we're left with this and this. There's not another individual X on the top, so our answer is just going to be X plus 5 over X, and we are done. 
Okay, now that we tried two examples together, you are going to try an example on your own. So our next problem is this. And I would like you to use the memory device we learned today and try the problem and then pause your screen, work on it on paper, and then I'll be back. Okay, hopefully you had a chance to work on this and you, if you got stuck, that's okay because I'm going to help you through it. But let's go through this and start out with the memory device. What do we know? We see division, we see two fractions, and we think, can you divide it? Don't even try it. You got to flip it around and multiply it. And it's the second one that always gets flipped. And to save time, because there's a lot going on in these problems, we can factor as we go and as we flip it. So let's just start with this first part. So we're going to factor this and factor this, and then we'll do the second part. So factoring this was a little more challenging. I was seeing what you could do. Now there is a number in front of the x squared, so it makes it a little more difficult. Um, but notice there's no GCF. There's no greatest common factor, so we have to go with this. The good news is 2 is prime. If you have a prime number, the only way to get 2 would be 2 times 1. So it's 2x times 1x is 2x squared. And then we look at the last number. Don't look at the middle one yet. Look at this one. There's two ways of doing that, 4 times 1 or 2 times 2. Sometimes it's just trial and error. You try something. If it doesn't work, you switch them. I'm going to go with 4 and 1 here because I see this bigger number. So let's just pretend. I'll actually do it incorrectly. If I put the 4 there, what you're doing is you're checking, like if you were doing FOIL, first, outer, inner, last. So you check the outer terms. That would be 2x. The inner terms are 4x. Those are not going to combine to give a 7. So that's not correct. But I always tell my students, don't give up on those numbers 4 and 1. Try switching their position because sometimes that makes a big difference because now the 2 multiplies to the 4. Here, I'll show you. So 2 times 4 is 8x, and 1 times x is 1x. And because that's negative, they have to be different signs, and I need a negative 7. So I'd want a negative 8 and positive 1, which would tell me that the negative sign goes there and the positive sign goes there. So you can always check yourself as you're factoring using FOIL. So once we know we have that correct, then we go on to the next one. And down here, you always want to look for a greatest common factor. And I see 7 goes into both those. So sometimes a number, but they also both have an x. So we take out the x. And what would that leave us with? We take out that. We take out one of those x's. So we still have 1x minus, and then basically it's dividing by that. 42 divided by 7 is 6. So we have the first fraction complete. Now here's where the memory device comes in again. Can you divide it? Don't even try it. You've got to flip it around and multiply it. So that becomes multiplication. These get flipped, and we can save time by factoring as we flip. So I'm going to do this one right now on top. And it's nicer, obviously, when it's just x squared compared to a number in front of x squared. So we're going to do this, x times x. 54, a lot of these deal with your times table. So if you know your times tables, you would recognize immediately that's 9 times 6. Now, if you're struggling with your times tables, that's something to keep, work on, keep working on. Um, but for now, I'm going to assume that you're OK with that. 9 times 6 is 54. But negative 15, they both would need to be negative because that doing the checking again. So you get negative 6x minus 9x does combine for negative 15x. This goes to the bottom. This is the difference of two squares. So x plus 4, x minus 4. So you have to recognize perfect squares. For example, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, etc. And then obviously x squared, x times x. But when you have the difference of two squares, you get different signs in your answer. So that's something to be aware of. So we've done the hard work. We just spent all that time factoring first. Again, to remind you of that, you want to factor first and then cancel. I always remind students, because some students get too eager and they start crossing things out when it's being subtracted or added, and you can't do that. So you have to factor first and then cancel. I see this. Whoosh, whoosh, those are identical. Uh, ooh, x minus 6. Whoosh, whoosh, those are identical. There is not another 2x plus 1. There's not an x minus 9. There's not an x plus 4. So basically, that's all I'm left with. And you just write it out as your final answer as a single fraction. So this times this. So you just put those next to each other. 
and this times that. And some students want to go further and like distribute this or multiply it, foil it out the top, but it's better. This is the better way to leave your answer. It's called factored form, and we're done. Thank you for joining me today, and keep working on your memory devices. Mm -hmm.